Now I did try the first generation Razer Barracuda X back when it first launched and yes, I actually do still have it here with me and I still very much like it. But this year, Razer has gone ahead and released a whole new lineup for the Barracuda family. Something which has been hinted at since the start as the X moniker usually refers to the budget friendly or entry level offerings from the company. So there's a refresh for the Barracuda X, there's the Barracuda and then there's this. This is the flagship. This is the Razer Barracuda Pro. So first of all, I do have to set the record because this is the flagship and with that does come a premium price. The Razer Barracuda Pro retails for about 250 US dollars or about 400 Singapore dollars. So with that in mind, let's first talk about the design. As Razer puts it, this is a premium wireless hybrid headset that's designed for both gaming and lifestyle on the go. And sure enough, this has an unassuming design that wouldn't really look out of place in a cafe, in a train or more. If you're familiar with the design of the Barracuda X, the Barracuda Pro is simply that but with some elements from the Opus and is overall slightly larger and made with slightly better materials. Now it does come in at about 340 grams or roughly 3 quarters of a pound, which means it is quite a lot heavier compared to the Barracuda X or other premium wireless headphones like the Sony XM5 or the Bose QC45. But we would say that Razer has done quite a good job with the weight distribution and the quality of the padding. The Barracuda Pro is still relatively comfortable to wear for long hours at a time without feeling much fatigue. This is also partly thanks to the fact that the ear cups are physically larger and deeper thanks to the larger drivers. Couple that with the soft touch leather and it really does provide a soft and plush feel on your skin with just the right amount of clamping force as well. Now in terms of controls, it's pretty bare bones. Most of it will be located on the left ear cup where you'll find the mute mic switch, a digital volume control, the power button, as well as an indicator LED and a Type-C charging port. On the right ear cup, there's a single switch for the Razer Smart Switch, allowing you to quickly toggle between hyperspeed and Bluetooth really quickly, while also acting as the toggle between the various ANC modes which does have audio cues. Really nice. And here's the first thing that you may or may not have noticed. It's the fact that the Barracuda Pro doesn't have a microphone jack for a detachable boom mic. Instead, the Barracuda Pro is the only one of the family that utilizes integrated beam-forming noise-canceling microphones right on the ear cups themselves. Personally, I myself would much rather have a detachable boom mic and these integrated mics don't really instill that much confidence, but more on that later. To add on, there isn't a 3.5mm headphone jack either, which means you can't use this wired should you run out of battery. On that note, you can't use it either while it's charging using the Type-C port, which is yet another bummer. Overall however, the design is as barracuda as it can get. It's really clean, really minimalistic, and I would say that it lends itself to being discreet, which is exactly what you want from such a hybrid headset headphone. Razer has definitely gotten it right here. And speaking about more rights, the battery life is pretty fantastic as well. Razer claims up to 40 hours of battery life and in our testing, we definitely managed really close to that number while also using the various modes of ANC on, off or ambient. Which also means if you were to purely use this without ANC, it might last even longer than that. But now let's talk about sound because arguably that's the most important factor when you talk about a pair of cans and especially more so when Razer touts this as being not just gaming centric but lifestyle focus as well. Inside those ear cups, you will find Razer's Triforce Biocellulose 50mm drivers and to put it simply, it uses their tried and tested Triforce design but upgraded with a thin biocellulose diaphragm that's supposed to reduce distortion for better clarity and deeper bass. This is paired with the THX Achromatic Audio Amplifier, a built-in amp right in the headset itself. The result? Well, it's a surprisingly well-balanced sound that lends itself towards being a little bit more warm and lush. In that regard, it manages bass response pretty well for it definitely isn't like most of the other Razer headsets. The bass has enough thump to it but yet isn't overpowering and plays really nicely with the other ranges for pretty much any genre of music. Vocals in particular were really nice and clean and the overall tuning is pretty good. There's also THX spatial audio available should you want to use that but we would generally advise against it. The implementation isn't that great.
That aside, we did find that the separation and sound stage to be a little lacking especially given the price. And on that note, it does sound good overall, but for the same price or less, you can get an equal or even better audio experience elsewhere. So it isn't perfect, but it's definitely still really enjoyable and definitely a much better audio experience compared to something like the Barracuda X. Additionally, you do also get ANC with these and they do perform good enough. There are a total of 10 adjustment levels for ANC strength, which you can customize via the Razer Audio app on your phone or via Synapse on the desktop. In our opinion, 7 seems to be the sweet spot. Any more than that and you really start to lose some of the nuances in your music, but any lower and the ANC doesn't really do much of a job. ANC on Ambient ANC off. However, we also did find that on the maximum level of 10, you will still be able to hear some noise such as the jet engine or a fan. So don't expect ANC to be as good as something like the Sony XM5 or even the XM4. This is definitely nowhere near as good. There's also of course ambient mode which does an okay job, but nothing fantastic and definitely nowhere near as natural sounding as compared to the likes of Apple. But now we have to talk about the microphones and this is a really questionable design decision. There are a total of two microphones, one on each side, and they do feature noise cancelling. But all I have to say is that this doesn't cut it. You can hear it for yourself and honestly, it just doesn't sound as great as what Razer claims it to be. Especially for the price tag that this commands, your voice just comes off as really thin sounding without much depth, and if you turn on mic noise cancellation, it gets even more digital. So now you're hearing it without any form of modifications, but if I go on and turn on mic noise cancellation via Synapse, now it's on a high setting and it's going to sound really digital and while it does block out quite a lot of the noise, your voice just doesn't sound great at all. Now you can, you can lower it down to low and it's just a little bit better but overall, it's just not that great. And now you're listening to the dedicated boom microphone on the Barracuda X, which is the first generation mind you, so there's already a second generation refresh which should sound a little better but either of them is still going to be so much more affordable as compared to the Barracuda Pro. And yes, while this isn't the best sounding boom mic headset on the market today, it still miles ahead as compared to the Barracuda Pro. Your voice just sounds so much fuller, with more depth and clarity, and everything is just plain better. And that's the thing, in a gaming scenario, communication is key and can make or break and change the tide of a game. And while callouts are important, it's even more important that your friends be able to hear exactly what you said. The microphones on these are without a doubt the worst part of the Barracuda Pro. So that's the Razer Barracuda Pro. It is without a doubt a good sounding headphone and definitely the best of the Barracuda lineup. But note the term we used, it's a good sounding headphone, not a headset. Unfortunately, the microphones just doesn't cut it. And with that said, we have to hark back to the price. For about 250 US dollars or roughly 400 Singapore dollars, this is really, really expensive for what it is. For the same price or less, you can now buy the Sony XM4 or the Bose QC35 II, both of which are significantly lighter and arguably sound much better. Or for a little more, you can get the latest XM5 or the QC45. Options that are far more desirable, especially if you're just looking for a true wireless headphone to listen to music on the go, and with support for better audio codecs, no less. On the other hand, if you're just looking for a good headset with a properly good microphone, there are tons of options out there for much less. In that regard, even a much more affordable Barracuda and Barracuda X provide a much better gaming experience as compared to the Pro. And honestly, you just need to remove the dedicated boom mic and you can just use it as you would like the Barracuda Pro and look equally as discreet. So the Barracuda Pro is really in a rock and a hard place. Razer has really tried to push the hybrid nature of it but it just didn't really get it that right. On the other hand, even though it does sound good and it's pretty great as a purely lifestyle-centric headphone, it is very much not worth the price as it is right now. This is definitely not 2.5 times better than the Barracuda X in terms of sound, not a single chance. Again, there are many better options out there. While the Barracuda Pro does sound pretty great, you are going to be paying much more for arguably a less experience overall. So, in our opinion, and actually me personally, 
I would just suggest getting the Barracuda or even the Barracuda X because this offers so much more value and arguably give you a better gaming experience while still being quite a good audio experience for lifestyle use and as such. But that's just me, what about you? If any questions, let us in the comment section down below. If you'd like to, do check out the affiliate links as well. If you do, thanks for the support. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Till the next one. See ya.